What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of the Lockdown Career Mode, it's episode number 42 and today we are wrapping up the calendar year of 2021 with our final 5 Premier League games of December. We've got Chelsea away at Stamford Bridge and Brian at home, Manchester City away at the Etihad Stadium and Crystal Palace at home on Boxing Day and then Liverpool away at Anfield as well. Five massive games, three huge away days. We'll see the draw for the FA Cup third round as well, and probably as well the Europa League round of 32 draw as well. There is so much stuff to get into today, so yeah, let's just get straight to it. So first of five, let's dive right into it. It's Chelsea away at Stamford Bridge right now. Five points and three places above us in the table as they occupy that fourth and final Champions League spot. It looks like it might be a three-horse race for the title this season between Liverpool and both Manchester clubs, but fourth place could still be up for grabs for us, but only if we can win these sort of games. First game is Chelsea away. Of course, this is the ground where we had our first and only scalp, if you count it, which I really don't. It was in the FA Cup quarterfinal last year. We won on penalties, but again, I don't really count it, to be honest. So he's still waiting for our first in the Premier League, that's for sure. And I don't know, I've got, I've got a feeling we might get it today, you know. We've got three chances. Let's see if we can do it on the first attempt. Watson drags it back and finds Tomori back at his old stomping ground. And out wide is Saka in a lot of space here with Sidui to beat. And he has beaten him. Saka! Good save by Kepa. Patted down and cleared away by Chelsea. First shot on target coming to the visitors. That's what you want to see. Werner has us on our heels right now. And the former RB Leipzig man finds Pulisic. First real chance for the Blues. It's cut back and Werner smacks it in. That's what the Blues fans will be seeing next season in real life. The German opens the scoring. Chelsea in front. They just need the one chance there. Timo Werner playing a quick little one-two and just drills it first time. And it's past Samba in a flash. 1-0, Chelsea out the early large. Hayden, big interception. It's going to drop straight to Jorginho as Chelsea win it back. Ridiculous. And now a golden chance here with the Italian sliding it through to Verne, looking for his second goal. Crosses to the middle, and Jorginho's tackle, and Watson and Tomori just scramble it away. You get no luck whatsoever on this difficulty. Still in this, though. Second half begins, only down by a goal. And we actually played pretty well in the first half on a few occasions. We had a couple of good chances. The final ball was just lacking. And we had the first shot on target, too. So still firmly in this here as the second half begins. And as Saka plays a 1-2 with Travis, we'll have the first chance of the half. And it's cleared away. But again, we're, we're getting in. We just can't play the right final ball. No goals, no points. But once again, I thought we actually did really well today. Stood up to the AI on ultimate. Almost every step of the way. If the final ball was there today, we would have found a lever at some point. We're getting closer. I don't think it will be long before we pick up our first scalp. I think the draw for the FA Cup third round has just been made as well. And it has indeed. And we've got Hull City in the round of 64. Is that going to be home or away? It's going to be away at the KCOM Stadium, the championship side, in January. What about the Europa League? Has that been drawn? Has that been drawn yet? Or is it... Uh... Oh! Oh, it has been. It has been drawn, and we can see it in the uh, the, the new screen here as well with the uh, the bloke pulling our name out of the hat or the ball now, if you will. But it's going to be Nottingham Forest against. Not on that screen, are we? No, not on that screen. There we are, bottom of the list. Oh, Fenerbahce, first leg away in Turkey. Oh, I remember those welcome to hell banners. That's going to be a tough tie to get through that one. We face the Turkish side in the group. We've got another one in a round of 32. Fenerbahce, first leg in Turkey. So moving on, second of five games as we aim to bounce back here at the City Grounds. We take on Brighton with nine wins in their first 17 games and off to a good start. Won't be an easy clash with Man City away next. We need the three points here. Come on, Nottingham Forest. If we can't beat the big teams, we need to keep on winning in these games. But it is worth pointing out, last home game in the Premier League... As Travis hits the woodwork and puts it behind for a goal kick, it was of course a 2 0 loss to West Ham. So with that in mind, back to back defeats in the league, I'm uh, I'm a little bit a little bit concerned. That we're going to watch the teams above us right now in the European places pull away, and we won't be able to catch them up. That's why this game has to be a win. Draw won't cut it. Saka, Marco. Shot blocked, second one comes back to him, and Marco makes it 1-0. This guy was so good in the last episode. That's been the last two, really, and Marco Vandenberg gives us the lead. Those sort of lucky bounces. 
you just don't get on ultimate. That will never, ever happen. But on the other difficulties you get them, Marco's first shot block comes straight back to him and finishes at the second time of asking. Again, if that's ultimate, it's clear by Davy Pripper. Instead, the German eyes on the prize, drills at home, 1-0. Hayden to Travis, and away goes the box to box with Josh making a move. Oh, this should be two. This should be two. King's got the speed. And he's got the end product. Oh, Josh King, what a start for the Norwegian. 2-0 Nottingham Forest. It's like six or seven goals in the Premier League already. He's on fire. I know we're 2-0 up, but I'll tell you one player that's really struggled today, Mason Watson. He's surrendered possession like three or four times already, and that shot by Davy Prumba sneaks in at the near post. Mason today just looks totally out of sorts. Hmm, I don't know what's going on today, but uh, for some reason he's... Uh, He's a little bit slow off the mark. Maybe the kid feels a bit burnt out. We're not entirely sure, but Pripper with a finish, 2-1. And, um, yeah, this is a bit worrying, really. It's now four straight Premier League games without a clean sheet for Mason and the boys in the back line. And it will become five away at the Etihad in our next fixture, right on cue in the top left there. Maybe, just maybe, considering our game was built on defence last season, we're, we're not quite as good as we think we are at the back. Need to improve a little bit as King finds Marco. And that's a lovely first touch, but couldn't get away. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a little bit concerned about how poor we've been defensively. I think I might put Joe back in our starting 11 in the next game as Samba has to bail me out and keep us still leading by two goals to one. This is a really little concerning run here, especially defensively. We just... Fratino was so good at that last season. This year it's totally changed as Mason can't block the shot and again I'm bailed out by Bryce. Travis flicks it over his head and nods it to Marco. Quick little passing move. Very nice indeed. Origi inside and that would have wrapped it up but it will this time. That sort of stuff just would never happen on ultimate difficulty. Josh King bags his second. Rebound deflected straight to him. Wasn't going to miss. Points in the bag. Nottingham Forest back to winning ways, but certainly not with our best performance. I thought we got away with that today. Two lucky goals, Brighton dominating possession, Bryce bailing me out a couple of times as well. Yeah, I think I think we were very lucky. So third of five, Manchester City away at the Etihad Stadium where Mason really needs a rest. Joe comes back into captain the lineup tonight. And after this game, we'll officially be at a halfway point in the season where we could be in sixth or could be as low as ninth. Third of five, it's Man City away. Might change lineup to uh, obviously with Crystal Palace on Boxing Day in just three days' time. That is a much more winnable fixture. We'd probably lose this game regardless of what team we've got. So it's a chance to experiment with a new formation, give fringe players some chances. Edin Dzeko back at his former team, warm reception I'm sure. But uh, you know, last season we got a draw here and a clean sheet as well. So maybe, just maybe, we could get it again. Mahrez down the right with Tomori to beat. And in goes the cross and Sane. Just got a step on Joe, switched off for a second. I don't know what he's complaining about. That was his man. There was only one in the middle. And I think Bryce is letting him know as well. And now he realises it too. Riyad down the right-hand side. Takes it around to Mori. Quick cross in the middle. And Joe just totally lost his bearing. Sani heads home. 1-0. Ah, oh, captain. You know, he'll always have a place in this team. But uh, one thing's for sure. Fikayo has been so good since coming in. And we know Mason's the future of this team. So... Yeah, it's, it's going to be tough for Joe. It, it, it's going to be tough for Joe now. I have been thinking about the possibility of selling him in January. I'm not against doing it, but I think I'd like to at least keep him here for the rest of the season. As Travis is denied by a great save by Stefan. Modric from Manchester City playing a lovely through ball to Sterling. We're scattered here. We're scattered. Dink to the far post. Olaza does enough. And the rebound turned in for a second goal from Leroy Sane. Scrambling. Didn't get the bounce. Man City double it. I've mentioned it before about Ultimate, and it really is just so frustrating. It's not like the AI play a different way or have a different play style, which is just harder to counter and harder to exploit and, and so on and so forth. So you need to elevate your game to win. It's just, it's frustrating how EA like intentionally impair your team, elevate their ability to an unrealistic standard. And also, again, have every kind of lucky deflection, lucky bounce, 50-50 ball go against you. That doesn't teach you how to become a better player or anything like that, you know. They've, they've got to work on ultimate. If they want it to be an enjoyable difficulty, but a challenging one that is a way of helping you get better at the game, they've got to modify it and, and realise it's not about, as Rodri's header is clear off the line, it's not about impairing your team and putting you at a major disadvantage. It's about improving the AI's play style and having their less exploits for you to beat them with. 
but I suppose that's just one man's opinion as uh, Dzeko finds Diangana and there could be a chance here oh go on Edin oh Edin go down how many times have we seen this as well why don't your players go down on ultimate there's clear contact, he doesn't win the ball, you go down, it's a penalty, but instead they always stand up. You don't get given anything on ultimate. Oh, I don't know, I don't know, we'll, we'll get there eventually. We'll get our first scalp eventually, but to be fair, backup team today, it was to be expected. It, it was always going to happen. Absolutely dominated and beaten by the far superior team. But again, with Crystal Palace on Boxing Day in three days' time, that's a winnable fixture. This one wasn't going to be regardless of what lineup we picked today. And so that means at the halfway point in the season, as you can see, after that victory, Manchester City now top the table, two points clear of Liverpool. Manchester United and Chelsea wrap up the top four. We are currently in seventh but already five points behind the Magpies occupying that fifth Europa League spot, which is of course what we need to get in order to keep the board happy. We're also only above Wolves on goal difference and one point clear of West Ham, so there is a lot of teams chasing us right now. Long way to go though, half the season down, and yeah, I, I still think fifth is definitely possible. But if we are going to get it, we need to win these sort of games. Four for five today, the Boxing Day fixture as we take on Crystal Palace. I'm right now sat in the relegation zone with just two wins in 19. This should be a banker but after a stuttering run of form I am feeling a little bit nervous. 4 for 5 Crystal Palace. This has been a tough first start. 25 minutes in still deadlocked at 0-0 and I've had a couple of shots that have both been blocked. Palace haven't really caused me much sweat but at the moment this game's got 0-0 written all over it and that is not what we need. Come on, come on, come on Travis that's yours. Inside and Tomori blocks the shot and does very well to clear under pressure as well. Still 0-0, is there one chance before the break to get ourselves in front in a cagey first half? Oh, it's a great ball and it should be 1-0 now. And it's not. It should have been, but it's not. Devox went forward, fluff my lines, the Welshman with the save and it's still 0-0. This will be a terrible result. I think I might need to try something different in the second half and get the boulder involved at the moment. What we've been doing hasn't been working. It's been a, a tough game. Crystal Palace standing strong. Two wins in 19, but tonight just can't break them down enough. As Origi on the turn needs a teammate. He's got Travis and Hayden with him. He'll come to the former, to the latter. Back to Travis. I just can't find an opening. Can't find an opening at all. Corner for Crystal Palace, which Benassi takes. And James heads clear, but not fully. And Sacco's header. I thought was creeping in. This has been a tough run for Forrest. Hayden to Saka. And away goes Bakai. Now he's got plenty of pace, Bakai. Way more than James McCarthy. And there's men in the middle. Travis. <laughs> Come on. One of those games, one of those nights. Forrest's poor form continues. Good to get a clean sheet for the first time in a while, but that had to be a win. I want to stay in Europe. I don't want to drop out of it after just one year. Europa League's fine, but we won't even get that with these sort of results. I thought we defended well tonight, which is a plus, I suppose, but I don't know what's happened to Divock Origi. He had such a lovely run of form, but hasn't scored now in, I believe, five games? Come on, mate, we need ya. And just before our fifth and final game today, well, I was waiting for him to hit 60 overall, but now I'm not going to be able to wait any longer. Morgan Bell has come to me and said he wants to terminate his contract. And as we know, he and the right back, Dave McDonald, are probably the highest potential players we've got in the academy right now. So I like his stats. Jay Brother is getting a pro deal today. Can't check his potential. Might as well find out his weak foot and skill moves and also positions. And it seems like he's a very versatile player. Can play all across the back line and has three star, three star, and is six foot two. I like that a lot. I tell you, he doesn't have very good defensive stats at the moment, but if we train those up, we got ourselves a very solid, versatile defender. Like it. Oh, not another one. Oh, it's the right back as well. <laughs> of course. The two highest potential players want their pro deals today. Okay, okay, all right. He is 61 overall, so we can check his potential and uh, see how good he'll be. We'll take a look now then real quick. See his weak foot skill moves and a uh, list of positions as well, where Dave McDonald is... An exciting prospect that can also fill in in left back as well. I'd love it if he's got a four or five star weak foot, which he doesn't. It's three star, three star, just like the left back uh, with medium low work rates, but only five foot six. 
so certainly not tall enough to play centre back. When going forward, looks really decent. So fifth and final game, and we know we're probably not getting anything from this. I believe they won the treble last season on the clock, and it's now Liverpool away in our final game of December. A tough run of form, and it's only going to get tougher before January. With Hull on the weekend in the FA Cup, I want my strongest possible lineup for that one to avoid any kind of cup embarrassment. So weekend lineup. I'm playing for the draw. Let's see if we can get it. Come on, Nottingham Forest. Early corner for the Reds. Klopp not impressed as we're still deadlocked at 0 0 here. But uh, as things stand, we're standing up strong to the hosts as Samba gets a touch on the ball and fists it away. Only temporarily, though, as Grujic back from his loan spell at Hertha Berlin finds Mane. And now Fabinho's shot blocked by Olaza and turned beyond. Look at that. Three or four blue shirts diving in there. That's what we need today if we're going to get a point. Fabinho's corner. Firmino off right off the line. Exactly right on cue what we need. And oh! Doesn't matter how committed you are, man. They always find a way. What a goal. Mo Salah with an absolute rocket gives the Reds the breakthrough. It was brilliant from Dale Fry. Heading that ball off the line as soon as it dropped to Salah. One touch, one shot, one goal. Liverpool in front. It's the Egyptian who is 11th of the year. Still in this. It's Dean Ganner. So well, so well, but Ferguson shot like the power. That is the best chance we'll get all game. We always get one, you know, every single time we face a big team, we always get at least one really good chance. And, well, we rarely take it. We might, but we rarely do. Joe blocks the shot, great defending, but still down by a goal. That was the moment we had to score that if we were going to get anything from the game. And as Grujic finds Fabinho, Samba keeps us hanging by a thread. It's a lovely ball, and Firmino makes it two. Game over now, no chance we come back from this. It's over. Oh, wow. Grujic, what a goal. They only need the sniff, just a sniff at goal, and they can bang it in with no problem. Oh, you are absolutely joking. <laughs> I mean, really. Really. This, EA, we're all telling you, please, do something about Oldham next year, because this is not how difficulty should work. Cross to the middle. I mean, really? Dale Fry's clearance with the circle button goes straight to Lewis. And I mean, come on. This, is, this just isn't right. We all wanted a difficulty that was far better than legendary, but not like this. Don't intentionally impair our team significantly and make the AI superhuman, whilst also have every single 50-50 ball lucky deflection going against you as well. It's not the way, EA. It's not the way. The way goes on for our first scout, but I, I do still believe we'll get it not before long, man. I mean, today might not have been a great example of it, but we have played some good football against the bigger teams this year. But with just one win in our last six Premier League games, it's our worst run of form since we were promoted in Season 1. And with January right around the corner and the window opening in the very next episode, 10 million in the budget... I think we're going to need a new signing if we're to stay in Europe next season. And that will end today's episode of the Lockdown Career Mode as well, guys. So a massive thank you for watching. I really hope you have enjoyed it. If you did enjoy today's episode, then please do drop a like. Much love to you all. And I'll see you for the next episode where the January transfer window will open. And we might need to make a quick signing very soon.